Hello everyone. It's the Vicar with you here today, back from Minnesota and Boston, and back here for my final stretch down here with you guys. As uh, many of you heard, of course, I'm going to Iowa this summer and a pair of churches, a dual parish there. I'm looking forward to that. Um, be happy to talk with you about that um, this weekend or next weekend or whatever. Yesterday, though, was a pretty important day in the church. A lot of churches have a special service on the day, on that Thursday. It always falls on a Thursday. And that is Ascension Day, the day when Jesus showed that he had finished his work on earth and ascended into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he works and rules through, uh, uh, rules the church from, uh, from heaven. Today I want to focus on a very specific verse which kind of points to this ascension and sort of how we should take uh, Jesus' ascension. And that actually happens on Easter morning. This is after Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. It's an interesting thing he says. So Jesus said to her, Mary, this is when, when Mary figured out who it was, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher, then Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. What does that mean? Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. That seems to imply that once she returns to the Father, once he returns to the Father, then you can hold on to me. Well, it kind of signaled a change that was about to happen. That Jesus was no longer going to be visibly present here on earth, right? He's still present with us in other ways, but we're not going to be able to see and touch him in that same way that people were during his uh, earthly life here uh, that is recorded in scripture. So he's saying that there is something else. There's another way to cling to him. And that's really what happens uh, after the ascension. See, when Jesus came here, of course, he had a specific goal. He had various words that he was supposed to uh, share that his father had given him. And, of course, he had work to do, a living a perfect life for us, dying on the cross, rising from the dead. And that ascension showed that all of that, what his physical presence here on earth was for, had all been accomplished. But now there is another way to cling to him, and that is clinging to his promises that he has in his word. Clinging on to the word, being reminded again and again of what Christ has done for us, and that's ultimately how we cling to him. We cling to him in the sacraments, in baptism, where those promises of Christ are given to us, where we are connected with what Christ did in his earthly life. We're connected with him. We cling to him in the Lord's Supper, where he is present with us in a supernatural way, in a way that only works because he's not just true man, but true God. And he can give us his true body and blood. That is now where we cling to Jesus. So the ascension shows, nope, you don't need to follow me around physically anymore. Everything that I'm here to do is done. But now, cling to me through, your, through the word, through the promises of not only what everything that uh, Jesus has done for us, but also in the promise to take us to heaven someday. So, that's a little ascension recap. We'll talk about it a little bit more on Sunday as well. Uh, but I hope to see you all there. It's going to be my last chance to preach for all of you uh, in my vicarage here. I'll be here a couple more Sundays. Uh, look forward to seeing you all there.